Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel, All Things Taylor, and you are just in time for Wicked Q&A Wednesday. It is that time, everybody. Wow. It is the most wicked time of the year. <laughs> I'm staring you guys all down right now because there were not a lot of questions for this week's Q&A Wednesday. What's up with that? <laughs> um... Yeah, so if I don't get any questions for Q&A Wednesdays, what I'll do is I just won't do a video. Because, um, like, if I have to make up questions, that's not that's not authentic. That would be more like Fun Fact Friday. Um, so just so you guys know what's going on. But I did have a few, so I'm going to answer them because they're gems. Um, the first person asked me a, a couple times. Um, I don't remember if it was on Twitter and YouTube or just YouTube. Um, they were asking me if my hair was soft. Um, I would like to say my hair is soft. Uh, a good that did happen out of this whole shelter in place, you know, quarantine pandemic was that I haven't had to wear hair extensions for like all year. Um, so yeah, this is my, my hair, which is like so surprising to me because my hair has suffered so much guys. Like I've had, I've had girls in the ring pull chunks of my hair out. Um, plus hair extensions take their toll and, you know, dyeing your hair, teasing it, styling it. And, you know, I don't know, just, even the dye. But, you know, so I dye my own hair. I do my own hair extensions for the most part in life. I've actually started trimming my own hair. I've become pretty self-sufficient. The styling of the hair is what gets me every time I suck at doing hair. Like, if any of you watch my stuff with, like, Ring of Honor, like, those are the only two hairstyles I knew how to do. <laughs> like all me that was always me doing my own makeup and my own hair it's like it was like the one look I knew how to do <laughs> it's so pitiful but as I have said which sounds hilarious looking at my makeup is I grew up a tomboy I did not grow up in a girly girl household we weren't allowed to wear makeup you know we you know it, it was just crazy so to this day I still do not know how to use a curling iron no concept on how it works. I can use a curling wand. I can curl my hair with a hair straightener, but I do not know how to use a curling guard. No idea. None. Like when I, I don't know, to me, it's like a medieval torture device of some kind. I'm like, just, you <laughs> Um, so yes, I would like to say that my hair is soft. Um, for all of you that want to learn how to take more care, I guess, better care or put more effort into it. Um, things like honey, apple cider vinegar, lemon, um, coconut oil obviously is a big one or argon oil. I prefer coconut oil, um, and tea tree oil. And then I use a lot of nioxin products to help regrow my hair after all the damage and hair loss and stuff due to, you know, your hair getting pulled out and wrestling you know? So, um, if you guys want me to do a whole video just on that, please comment below. Um, all the stuff that I do is not female specific to my hair. So, um, honestly, it, it's very much unisex. Um, and that's kind of a lot of the stuff that I like to put out there to fans is because, you know, I feel like a lot of times, you know, people just think it's only women that want to focus on their skin or their hair, but I've actually met a lot of men that actually have questions too. And nobody really caters to them. They just think it's a, a female thing. And it's like, no, men, there's men out there that want to take care of themselves too. So I like to be, you know, equal opportunity with the advice and tips and tricks and products. Um, you know, so. Yes, I would say my hair is soft. <laughs> um, okay, another person asked me if I would consider or was interested at any point in time to do kind of like fan films on my YouTube channel based off of either, you know, TV shows, movies, and or like comic book stuff that I like. Absolutely. I actually feel like I'm sort of in my own way doing that now. So thank you for your question. I think it's really cool. Um, I would totally be into that. Um, as you guys can see, I, I love doing a lot of different types of vignettes and things like that. I think I'm good at it. It's something I enjoy. Um, but the vignettes, what people don't realize is like even a 30 second vignette that takes, that takes hours worth of, you know, the editing, the footage and the color grading and all of that stuff. Like there's so much that goes into it, even making films. If only 30 seconds has, you know, several hours worth of editing, imagine like an hour and, you know, 50 minute <laughs> movie that it just, I've learned so much. Um, okay. The next question that I remember is somebody asking me based off of my last Q&A Wednesday video was if I have seen Army of Darkness. Yes, I have. I actually really like that movie. So thank you for asking. Uh, kudos and shout out to you, man. You know who you are. Um, I saw I saw your question in the comments on my YouTube channel. So yay. 
Okay. So another question was, will I wrestle again? And the answer is I am not retired just because I'm not wrestling right now. People seem to think that I'm retired and it's like, nah, I'm not retired. I, I don't like that word anymore because I noticed so many people that have retired have come back. So it's like, well, did you, did you, did you really retire though? No, honey, no. So I have not retired. I just, like I said in a previous video, I've cho I've made the personal choice to not wrestle in 2020. Um, I wrestled in January before this whole thing went down. Um, I was very lucky. My opponent was from the Philippines. She was absolutely amazing. She is going to be a rising star someday. Shout out to Nina uh, with PWR um, out in the Philippines. Uh, she is going to be an up and coming star. You heard it from me first. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I have not retired. I will come back to wrestling when I am ready and or, you know, if the deal is right. Like I said, um, I'm focused on other projects right now that I've waited my whole entire life to do. And, you know, I lost faith in them after, you know, hearing for years, like people telling me that I wasn't good enough or I was too stupid, too dumb or critiquing how I walk, how I look, how I shake hands, how I stand, if I'm slouching, da 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 You know, there's only so many negative things you can hear about yourself before you start to believe them, even if they aren't true. And so I lost sight of all the goals I ever dreamed of for myself. And now that I am more myself than ever, and I'm totally free with my authenticity, I'm going after all the dreams that I ever had since I was a little girl. And I love that, you know, um, and one of the opportunities I wouldn't be able to do had I had signed contracts when I was presented with some opportunities. So, um, you know, if the opponent's right, if the deal is right, absolutely. I'll come back. Just not in 2020. I want to be safe. I want to keep my fans safe. I want to keep my family safe. And most importantly, I want to keep, you know, everyone safe, whether it's, you know, the, the company that I'm working for, myself, you know, my family, my friends, my fans. It all matters to me. So that's my personal choice. That's no dig on anybody else. That's just my choice. Everyone's free to make their own choice, you know. So that's that. Um, another person asked me if there were any women that I would like to wrestle. That is such a loaded question because there's so many that I'm going to forget a lot of them. Um, but I want to wrestle Lady Shawnee in uh, AAA. Um, I would love to wrestle with Ivelisse. I think she's amazingly talented. I get along with her very well. Um, I would also love to wrestle Natty Neidhart. Um, I would love to wrestle and I would love to wrestle with as a tag team or valet Abaden in AEW. I think I said her name right. Um, I was watching her for about six months before she got signed. Uh, actually more like a year, a little, maybe a year, a little more, give or take. Um, and I thought she was really talented. So I was really excited to see her get all these major opportunities with AEW. Um, I just think her vibe and my vibe would be so amazing. Like, <laughs> especially because it's really funny because recently she had a, a photo that she put on her social media and it was literally like, like a pose that I had done. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, we're totally twinning right now <laughs> without even trying. Like we're just several years apart. Uh, cause that photo of mine was a couple years old and I was just like, wow. And the fact that I did that photo and on a fractured angle is like extra impressive. Uh, a lot of people don't know that that photo was taken when I had a fractured ankle and I'm wearing these giant heels and it was for Russell Khan and I have a fractured ankle. So I have so many backstage stories, guys, like you guys would be so surprised. Uh, <laughs> um, I would love to be able to wrestle a bunch of women. So if you guys want more, uh, of all these women that I would love to wrestle, comment below and maybe I will do a whole video just dedicated on that. Um, another person asked me, what are some of my big pet peeves right now? Um, there's two that immediately come to mind. <clears throat> One is people can, uh, bleh, you can tell I'm already like flustered because I'm like, no, nah! I just want to bash brains in. I'm just kidding. Uh, but it makes me that irritated. <laughs> uh, people, um, people complaining that wrestling Twitter and Twitter in general are toxic. This is known. This is known. So you pointing it out only makes it more toxic. So spin that around, turn the tables and flip it. You know, put the thing down, flip it and reverse it. <laughs> you know, what are you doing to make it less toxic? You know, are you being, you know, a source of positivity? You know, uh, hate only gets more hate, guys. Like that, that's been proven. You know, uh, 
some people just are out there to complain and to hate and, and giving them hate back is only going to fuel them more. So just spread love, not hate, promote what you love, not what you hate. You know, um, we all know there's certain toxicities, but social media also has the ability to do amazing things, like amazing, crazy, awesome things in seconds, because that's how it works. That's how social media works. It connects billions of people all over the world in seconds, you know? Um, and so with that, with great power comes great responsibility, guys. <laughs> uh, but for real, it really does. You know, um, instead of being a mindless, heartless drone on the internet without any sort of consequences, be a good person. Use it for good. Use your powers for good. You know, uh, you know, I mean, I can't get any more Spider-Man than that, you know. Um, you don't need to point that out. So that's one pet peeve of mine. Another pet peeve of mine Oh, okay. I might just do a whole video on this just to give her a shout out because I feel like she could, she could really use some love. Everybody hating on Lana is another pet peeve of mine that keeps coming up daily in my timeline. And it just, it grind. Maybe I should do like a Peter Griffin segment of grinds my gears, like a 30 second segment or something on my YouTube channel. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that's copyrighted. I don't know. I don't know but maybe I should. Um, anyways, people put so much hate on Lana in the WWE. Okay, guys, let's real talk for like one minute. Okay. A lot of you that are tearing this beautiful woman down have never set foot in a ring in your life. And if you have, you probably weren't trained properly. And even if you were trained properly, it's not going to be the WWE way, which means after you got signed, even if you were trained properly, you would still spend at least another year or more in their performance center so you can wrestle the way they want you to wrestle without any other habits, only their habits. Okay. The most successful businesses do that. <laughs> the WWE is no different. Okay. So then the next time you want to put hate on a superstar, just re like check yourself, just, just check yourself because there's a lot of people, you know, even, even, you know, wrestling journalists and wrestling reporters, it's like, they'll, they'll, they'll rate matches five stars and blah, and it's like, how many rings have you bumped in? You know, like, and, and a lot of times the people that they're putting over are their buddies. So it's like, it's all a rigged system. You know, even, even these wrestling rankings, it's like, these wins and losses are determined by the people that are booking them. It's not based off of their, their fighting skill or their talent half the time, guys. Like, it, mm. and so back to the Lana part, people give her so much hate that have never set foot in a ring. And I, okay, now we're going to, that's fact number one. Fact number two is what we've, we're going to talk about right now that I've seen with my own eyes. These two eyeballs right here, these two green eyes. Boom, 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 boom. One and two. Okay. So from 2014 through early 2016, um, I was an extra for the WWE, I think like six times, six, six-ish plus a WWE tryout. Okay. At my tryout, Ember Moon was signed. Um, an Australian tag team was signed. Tommaso Ciampa was signed. Drew Gulak was signed. Like it was a crazy epic tryout camp. Um, uh, Rachel Ellering was there. Giselle Shaw was there. Uh, it, uh, Jessica Havoc, like amazingly, immensely talented people. Anyways, <clears throat> every single time I was at the WWE, Lana was either in the ring trying to learn how to wrestle or trying to get people to go in the ring to teach her how to wrestle. And what, what, what I want people to understand about that is she's not being told to do that. She's doing that because she wants to. She's doing that because she wants to wrestle. Okay. You guys should be putting over and cheering on and motivating somebody that actually wants to be in this business and actually wants to wrestle in this business and not just wrestle so they can use it as a, a jumping off platform to leave it. Like Lana has always been trying to wrestle. If you don't think she's that great right now, let's put it this way. She hasn't had the benefit of being at NXT for three years to learn how to wrestle. All, all of the learning that she's had up until recently has legit been on the road, which is so different. You get to train 
if and when it's available. You know, if there's a major main event segment that has a lot of moving parts, that ring is going to be taken up for several hours. And there's only so many hours before a show, you know, and, and, and every, all the other moving parts that are going, going on. So she hasn't had the same type of experience as a Sasha, a Bailey, a Charlotte, uh, a Carmella, a Becky Lynch. They all got to go to NXT. And some of them actually had independent wrestling experience before going to NXT. Lana hasn't had any of that. But she has a drive, she has a desire, and she has a passion. When you see her crying in a lot of these promos, that's actually her passion. That's not, oh my god, she's an Oscar-worthy actress. No, she's not putting on an act for you. She genuinely wants to wrestle. Okay, because if you think about it, she could get by doing almost anything else. That she wants to in the WWE, whether it's, you know, commentating, valeting, which you've already seen her do, you know, but she wants to wrestle. So that really, really just huge pet peeve of mine. I would rather see people putting over her effort as opposed to tearing her down for where she's at right now. You know, you can't, you can't judge her level one through 10 to Becky Lynch's, say, level 100. You know, you can't, you can't judge Lana's level 10 to Sasha winning at, at Hell in a Cell. It's not the same. They're not on the same level yet, and that's okay. Okay, you know, Becky Lynch wasn't, you know, the Becky Lynch you know today the first day she started wrestling. Taylor Hendricks wasn't the Taylor Hendricks that you know today my first day wrestling. You know, and, and a lot of us have had different abilities to be able to get in the ring and train consistently, whereas Lana has tried to pick up bits and pieces, you know, from her husband, from AJ Styles, from Fit Finley. These are all people that I've seen her in the ring with trying to learn from and asking questions from. So I would like to see more people, you know, putting her over in the sense that at least she's trying, at least she wants it. And not so she can get a name to go and do something else, like, like whatever else that she wants, whether it's Hollywood, whether it's, you know modeling, whether it's, you know, television, whatever the case may be. Okay. So that, 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 those are two really huge pet peeves for me. People constantly pointing out the toxicity of social media and it's like, well, what are you doing to change that? And two, all the people that are being so negative to a person that actually wants to succeed in a bit in the business that they are, they're all watching just to critique. <laughs> Like, instead of killing somebody's dreams, why don't you lift somebody up so that they can be better to go and fulfill those dreams? And then you have another amazingly talented person to watch on a program that you say you love, but you're tearing people down who are on it. You know, um, Asuka wasn't Asuka. You know, before she became Asuka, she was Kana. And, you know, do you think that she was that caliber the first day she started wrestling? No! Was Trish Stratus Trish Stratus when she first started wrestling? No, we all have a point to which we can jump off of and build from. So I would rather see more people kind of supporting Lana because regardless of whether or not you like her look, regardless of whether or not you think she's talented, regardless of whether or not you just don't like her, at least give her the decency of respecting the hustle because she could get by doing already what she's doing in the storylines story that she's doing. But she actually wants to wrestle. I've seen it with my own eyes every single time I was there. I saw it back when Eva Marie was still in the WWE and Cameron. I saw it back when um, Roman Reigns won the, the Royal Rumble where they were like booing him out of Philly. Um, all of these different times I was there, I saw that girl trying to learn on the road, trying to get in the ring, asking questions of other people that were in there and qu questions from people that have a lot more know-how than her. her and herself. And if you watched my episode with Lisa Marie Varen, uh, she actually says that Lana was the, one of the few women to go up and shake Lisa Marie Varen's hand backstage one time in Chicago and introduce herself and ask her for advice. So the next time you see somebody kind of being negative towards Lana and kind of pestering and, you know, bullying Lana, maybe stand up, maybe say something and realize that, you know, not everything's as it seems. You know, you kind of have to respect a girl that goes to a veteran, shakes hands, and asks for advice. There's not many people doing that anymore. Um, <laughs> the business has changed a lot. So those are two of my peppies. <laughs> 
Well, that took me, I had a lot to say, guys. I'm sorry about that. Uh, you can tell how much that bothers me. And, and and it's not like her and I are best friends. Like, we follow each other kind of on social media and stuff. But, you know, I'm not saying this because I'm like, yo, that's my BFF. I'm saying it because I've genuinely seen it. And I've been in that position. I know what that's like. And I was, I, I was, and still to this day, and one of the women that will be like, hey, you have a lot more experience than me. I would love to get your advice on this, that, and the other. Like, I've sent stuff to Vince Russo before. Before I was working uh, for his the brand uh, for my podcast, um, I sent stuff to Kevin Kelly back in the day uh, for promo stuff and whatnot. Um, I sent stuff for Les Thatcher. I sent stuff to Rip Rogers. Um, like I, I sent stuff to Lisa Marie Baron. I, you know, I always want to learn from people that have more experience than me and to who have kind of done some things that I want to do. You know, so to me that that's a big deal. Big 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 huge. <laughs> Pretty woman. Okay. Um, give you guys a little update. I'm getting ready to upload some vignettes. I am super stoked. Um, I finally finished all the edits for my two children's books. I am going to be having those come out. And uh, I'm shooting episode two of Taylor's Tiny Kitchen tomorrow. And hopefully I'll be able to get it up in time for Halloween. Um, if you guys want a tutorial video for Halloween, just me giving you guys some ideas since I think a lot of places are canceling Halloween, which it's kind of like, you know, I don't understand that because, I mean, if, if adults are allowed to get takeout from restaurants, I feel like people can hand out candy. Uh, but what do I know, all right, I guess. Um, but yeah, if you guys want some ideas, I know I talked about that a lot with Shelly Martinez on Talks with Taylor Hendricks about three weeks ago. Uh, but I would be happy to do another one. Um, okay, this concludes this episode of Wicked Q&A Wednesday. If you guys get in more questions comment below with them and I'll be sure to do another one next week if I see questions. <laughs> um, also, I don't know if you guys could see this. I have a limited edition shirt that I'm wearing. I was saving it for live events that I was supposed to do this year until this whole pandemic happened. Um, so I will say that I have a few, uh, limited sizing and stuff available. If you want this really cool, um, kind of eighties, rock inspired shirt that I have. Um, send me an email to taylorhendricks at yahoo.com. Uh, first come first serve, especially with sizes. Um, if I don't have your size, what a lot of people do is they'll actually, um, put them inside like poster frames and like frame them. But that's totally up to you guys. Um, I have several still left since I am not doing any live events in 2020. Um, so yeah, shoot me an email, taylorhendricks at yahoo.com. Be sure to check out my book. It's not easy being a sloth. Uh, it is uh, available on barnesandnobles.com as well as amazon.com. And uh, stay tuned because I will give a sneak preview coming up real soon of the next cover for my next children's book. Until next time, everybody. Stay safe.